G'day, g'day, g'day. My name's Bert. G'day, boys and girls. My name's Bert. I'm a koala and I live in New Zealand. And this here, behind me, is also Bert, a friend of mine. No, I know what you're thinking. Not everybody in New Zealand is named Bert. It's just a common name. Like John, or Sally, or Sheila. Actually, Bert's a pretty nice guy, but you don't want to mess with him. Because he can be pretty brash. Brash is a good word, it's part of your vocabulary words from lesson 10, which I'm going to review with you today. The word brash means hasty in thought, or offensively bold. Think of somebody who's the opposite of a uh, polite, or somebody who is careless, makes hasty decisions, you know, without thinking about them before they do it. Oftentimes, he'll just go biting at the eucalyptus leaves, not thinking twice about where they've been, who's been eating on them before. Sometimes, he'll even bite a finger if he isn't careful. You see, I'm a buff when it comes to koalas and when it comes to eucalyptus leaves. A buff is an enthusiast, someone who gets really excited about those kinds of things. It's got other definitions as well. You can use the word buff as a verb, to polish something with a soft material. So like you might decide to buff, I don't know, a crystal or a piece of glass. But if you're a buff like me and you're excited about something, it means you probably know a lot about it. The opposite, of course, is somebody who's a beginner. Somebody who doesn't think about these things. Now, some people might accuse me of being intemperate. Intemperate is a really good word, one of my favourites. It means excessive in behaviour or unrestrained. So, for example, somebody who is intemperate might eat too much eucalyptus leaves. They might drink too much coffee. They might talk too much. So you can say, my friend Bert here, behind me, is not an intemperate talker. He's quite the silent type, really. Unless you interrogate him, which is another one of your vocabulary words. Interrogate means to question formally. So, oftentimes we think of interrogation when we think of police dramas. I don't know about you, but I like watching the television. And sometimes my favourite TV shows have to do with police. And the police often have to interrogate people. They bring them into a room and they play good cop, bad cop. I'm the good cop, if you can't tell. My friend Bert here, behind me, he's the bad cop. Don't want to mess with him, because then that's when he gets brash. Starts acting out. Not thinking before he does things. Gets a little crazy, if you know what I mean. Anyway, let's go on. A synonym for interrogate is to grill or to quiz. You might recognise the word interrogate because we use a version of it when we're talking about grammar. For example, if you ask an interrogative question, it means you're asking something. An interrogative sentence ends with a what? Yes, that's right, Bert. A question mark. However... If you are asking questions and you can't arrive at an answer, chances are that that's a moot question. It's a moot subject. Not the word mute, which is spelled M-U-T-E. This word moot, M-O-O-T, means subject to debate, disputable, doubtful. So sometimes, Bert and I get into a conversation, an argument really, because he's the brash type, about which comes first, the chicken or the egg. I think that the chicken came first because where's the egg going to come from if you don't have a chicken? However, Bert here, crazy as he is, thinks that you have to have an egg. Otherwise, where does the chicken come from? And we should argue about this all day. Does it matter? But at the end of the day, there's no answer to the question. So you can say that that question is moot. Debatable. It's not established. It's controversial. I like it here in the outback. New Zealand's got... Beautiful temperatures, beautiful days. However, sometimes, if you're not so lucky to be living in the outside, if you happen to be in a zoo and you're at Koala, they stick you behind a shiny piece of glass. And that glass is not always as transparent or clear as it is here. When something is not transparent, when something is not clear and we can't see through it, like a frosty piece of glass or glass with lots of dirt on it, we call that opaque. Opaque means impenetrable by light. That means light cannot pass through it. Lots of things are opaque. For example, a wall is opaque. A koala is opaque. You can't see through my friend Bert here. You can't see through me. And if you were to take a look at, let's say, a piece of, I don't know, polished glass, you see right through it because it's transparent. But if you were to look through a screen, like a movie screen, and you couldn't see through it, that would be opaque. When I try to give you vocabulary words, I try to be pragmatic. Pragmatic means practical, concerned with facts and observations, rather than just theory. A theory is a guess you have about something. It's not fact, it's not information, 
And so when I'm teaching my classes vocabulary, I like to make sure that I'm giving you things that are proven, things that are practical, excuse me, practical, things that you can use in your classroom, not just things that are based on theory and beliefs. Things that are pragmatic are realistic, they're logical. You know, around here, around these parts of New Zealand, I am quite prestigious. That means I'm esteemed widely. Lots of koalas know about old Bert here, but you have to be specific and tell them that it's Bert who knows English. Otherwise, you get confused with this Bert. Right, the one behind me. And he doesn't know English too well. He's not much of a talker. So the word prestigious has some synonyms, words that you could use instead, like prominent or celebrated, renowned. Somebody who's prestigious might be considered famous. Like your president of the United States is a prestigious figure. Whereas your teacher might not be as prestigious as your president, even though everybody in the school knows him. However, you can say that in my school, your teacher is prestigious. That's probably because he's a bit of a prodigy. A prodigy is a person with extraordinary ability or talent. Now, these people, who we would call prodigies, tend to develop their talents at early ages. Chances are some of you in the classroom are prodigies because you learned how to do something exceptionally well from a very early age. When I think of prodigies, I think of Mozart or Beethoven who learned to play the piano when they were just six years old. Living out here in the beautiful plains of the outback is very appealing to me because we've got all of these excellent varieties of eucalyptus leaves which, if you don't know, are very delectable and tasty to koalas. Koalas love the savoury, which means appetising, appeal of eucalyptus leaves. They just hit the spot when you're hungry, if you know what I mean. They're very appetising, very flavourful, very tasty, all of which are synonyms for the word savoury. When something is savoury, it means you like the taste of it. You guys might think ice cream is savoury, but a koala doesn't like it. You guys might think pizza, which sounds like a great idea, is savoury, tasty, acceptable. But the word savoury doesn't only apply to foods, it also applies to ideas. For example, if I were to say to you, guys, what do you think of the idea of doing three hours of homework tonight? You might say that's not very savoury at all, really. However, if I say let's play a game, or let's watch a video, you'd say that that was a very savoury idea. One of the things I like about your teacher, Mr. Swirlow, is that he seems to be pretty sedate. The word sedate, one of my favourite words, it's a good word, means calm and reserved. He's laid back. Casual. You might know the word because sometimes it gets used as a verb. You have to sedate someone. In those movies, especially the cop dramas, which I really like, they often sedate people using something called chloroform. Put it over your face and your mouth, and that person just falls asleep. You sedate them. One of the synonyms is tranquilize. You might know the word tranquilizer because we refer to tranquilizer darts because they sedate people. They put them to sleep. One of the synonyms you should know is anesthetize. Anesthetize is the same word root as anesthesia, and if you've ever had to have an operation, then you know that anesthesia is a very important thing, because it makes you fall asleep, it sedates you, makes you calm. Some of the opposites then, to stimulate, to excite. So if something gets your blood percolating, which means bubbling and boiling, that excites you, it doesn't sedate you. One of the nice things about going to this school and attending a university school is that it's a singular and exceptional experience. You guys are distinguished from others, whether you know it or not, because you have an individualized experience. Your instruction is tailored just towards you. It's unique, which is a synonym, or uncommon, as opposed to ordinary and average. The students at university school are also singular. That means that they are distinguished. They do things that are unique. They do things that set them apart from the rest. Unlike Bert here, who's pretty average, if you ask me, he's pretty ordinary, he's not singular at all. However, Bert is spontaneous. Spontaneous is an adjective. It means unplanned. Now, I know what you're thinking. I'm not saying that Bert is unplanned, although that might be the case. What I'm saying is that Bert does things that are unplanned. He doesn't like to make plans, that's because he's brash, hasty. He does things without thinking, you see. Instead, he just improvises. He comes up with it on the spot. That's why we say he's impulsive, improvisational, or spontaneous. It can't take him anywhere. You have to be very careful, because you never know what Bert's going to do. One of the things that I'm always worried about is that he's going to usurp my spot on the tree. You see, I have one of the best spots, closest to the best eucalyptus plants, and I don't want anybody to take it. 
Bert here has been eyeing me the entire time, and I'm sure you've noticed he's not exactly happy looking. I want to make sure that he doesn't take over my spot. He doesn't usurp my position. Usurp means to seize by force without right. Right? And I want to make sure that he doesn't sneak up on me and catch me unaware while I'm not looking. So if you see Bert so much as move, please, tell me. Most of the time, I'm an easygoing guy. I could be sedate, but sometimes I'm whimsical. Whimsical is a great word because it describes people, or koalas, that are playful, fanciful. There are some good synonyms for this one as well. You might want to know the word capricious. Many children's books, for example, are whimsical, or have whimsical characters, because those characters are playful. They have to do with romance and fancy, are things that are tied to ideas, not tied to reality so much. You might have a whimsical room, a room that's decorated with lots of childish things, lots of toys and games. When I act whimsically, I like to dance. I do a little koala dance. I shake my head. I move it around. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I'm really glad you had a chance to join me and my friend Bert here for Vocabulary Lesson 10. I want you to stay tuned. Make sure you act like good boys and girls in class for your teacher because there are going to be other people coming to you to teach you about vocabulary. And I hope you are not sedate about this. It was nice meeting you and have a great day. This is Bert, signing off.